Okay, my name is Maureen Ryan, and I'm part of the Minions group for the communications class. And today I just want to start off by asking you guys, um, how many of you can fluently speak another language other than English? That's what I figured. <laughs> well, how many of you were required to take a mandatory language course in high school? Also what I figured. Well, don't you find it odd that throughout your childhood you learned exclusively English and everything was really focused towards just that one language? But then once you got to high school or college, it all of a sudden became very important to learn a second language. And I'm sure many of you have even been told that you've become more marketable in your career if you picked up a second language, especially such as like Spanish or Mandarin, as those are becoming super popular now. And um, so what's interesting is that we focus uh, so much on English during childhood, but once we get to high school and college, we decide that it's important to learn a second language. Well, for me, that just doesn't cut it. <laughs> we should really start focusing on becoming bilingual or at least learning another language in grade school so then when we become older, we'll be able to have that language as a skill to use in our life and in our careers. So in the United States, um, we are one of the most economically developed and competitive countries in the world, but unfortunately, we are severely lacking on the area of global communication. As I said, many of us are not bilingual or we don't have that second language skills and in comparison to other countries, especially over in Europe, we're far behind linguistically. So according to Kat Zevlin's article published by the Pure Research Center, uh, most European countries do have compulsory second language requirements. And actually from a firsthand experience with that, my three little cousins were um, monolingual in English, and then they moved to Bulgaria at a very young age. I believe it was four, seven, and 10 respectively. And so in Bulgaria, just through cultural exposure and immersion, they all picked up on the Bulgarian language within about a year or two, and they're fluent in Bulgarian and English. And then in the Bulgarian school system, they also teach Russian. It's mandatory for all Bulgarians to learn Russian. So my little cousins went from living in the United States, being monolingual in English, to moving to another country and becoming trilingual in Russian, Bulgarian, and English. And it really, I don't want to say that it wasn't difficult because obviously learning three languages is very difficult. However, because they learned it at such a young age, their brain was developing at the same time as the language skills, so they were able to pick up on them very quickly. Their mother, who also moved to Bulgaria with them, has still not been able to pick up on that Bulgarian language because she was past that peak language learning window when she moved over there. Much like all of us, probably struggled in high school or college to pick up on that second language because it's just natural for our brains to have already developed our English language skills or our heritage language skills and not really have that capacity to learn another language. So while I'm explaining all this to you, I just, what I'm really focusing on is how bilingualism can really help improve our cognitive abilities, our developmental abilities, and how the United States should really try and focus on that bilingual programs in our um, grade school systems because then it would really prepare us to become more global citizens as we grow up. And um, just some statistics, according to Gidgeworth Stowitz's study on the Simon task, which is just a task that kind of measures cognitive abilities um, through different like tasks that you would do like on paper, um, it says that speaking two or more language literally bol bolsters your cognitive abilities and bilingual people tend to possess stronger critical thinking and solve problem solving skills, as well as um, a higher rate of mental flexibility. So just speaking that other language really increases your developmental skills, helps you think critically, helps your creative skills. And based on these statistics alone, it would be extremely advantageous for the US to implement required language programs in schools so our children can bolster those cognitive skills from a very young age. And like I said, if taught at a young age, the brain is already developing in the direction of language and it's very easy for younger children to pick up on those language skills. As young as preschool through about Second grade is the peak language learning window, so it would be extremely advantageous for us to implement those programs into preschools and um, the lower levels of grade school. And then also, according to the U.S. Secretary of Education in 2010, um, she said, to prosper economically and to improve relations with other countries, Americans need to read, speak, and understand other languages. So that's just, coming from the Secretary of Education, it's clearly an issue that um, has grown nationwide. Uh, very few Americans or United States citizens are bilingual, um, and this could really be changed because then we would become more marketable in this global community. And especially as technology um, continues to advance and the globe is becoming more interconnected, 
It's really setting us at a disadvantage if we're not able to communicate with all of our business counterparts. And then I know that there is another side to this argument. A lot of people in the recent decades have been arguing that in the United States, we're already speaking English, we, which is the language that they do teach in most other foreign countries as the second language. So we could technically be at an advantage for already speaking that language because that's the language that a lot of other um, global countries do communicate in as a second language and we already speak it, so why bother? However, <laughs> um, according to the uh, PBS article, Official American, um, an official language is one that has been given legal status in a country or territory. And although it, the language doesn't have to be used in informal situations, it has to be um, used with government and business legislations. But that would still put us behind because we have so many citizens that all have such different cultural heritages and backgrounds. And as the United States boasts, we are a melting pot or a mosaic of plenty of different cultures. And as we're becoming more connected, we need to be able to recognize our cultural competency and allow people to speak their heritage language because it has such a great attachment to um, their identity and to their cultures. And learning a second language really allows them to keep their heritage while also speaking English. And having both those languages really helps having two different cultures. Um, there's plenty of instances where um, children will have a native language at home, and then that, for example, it might be Spanish. And then they attend um, the American schooling system, and then they learn English. And they're completely bilingual. Nothing is changed. And then when they're home with their families, they're able to celebrate all of those um, cultural and heritage holidays and traditions while also still partaking in our culture. And it doesn't really take away from them as an individual. So mandating official English is just not really um, a really logical option, especially where we are in 2017, as the world is becoming more connected. It would really put us at a disadvantage to only promote one language in this melting pot of culture. So um, with all that in mind today, I just really urge you to consider the significance of bilingualism in the US and how, it, how advantageous it is for our citizens especially the upcoming generations. And as a world leader, this country is definitely one of the um, ones that other countries might look up to for our economics and how successful we are overall. But we need to be able to maintain that cultural competency to communicate with each other and make sure that we have those linguistic skills that apply to the rest of the world. So what's really important for the United States today is to instigate those bilingual programs into our grade schools and ensure that we're preparing our next generation for the future. Woo!